to this correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax, grammar, mini class. In this mini class, I am going to focus on the positionals, the four positionals of correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax, grammar. For, of, with, and by. The only four positionals that one needs to create a correct sentence structure claim. The only four positionals that work correctly forwards and backwards maintaining the mathematical interface on grammar that Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller brought to the public so many years ago. Now what I'm going to do here is to go take a little bit different angle than I've taken before. I'm going to do an in-depth study on each positional. And through forensics, through thousands of hours of study, I feel that I have determined or credentialed exactly where David Wim Miller got his ideas for these positionals, performing the functions that they perform within the confines of correct sentence structure. Of course, David never gave closure to this in any video, no specific closures as to why he chose these positionals. But through study and through what I'm going to show you here, I think we can pretty much come to the same conclusion and the same logic as to why he chose these four positionals to maintain the mathematical interface on grammar uh, that he used. Now as a caveat, I know that in certain videos and certain uh, documents that you may have seen, or even in his book, you will see more than those four positionals. I don't have an answer as to why that is. But what I can attest to and what I can testify to is that he made it quite clear on multiple occasions that the correct sentence structure concatenation is for the facts of the facts are with the facts of the facts with the facts by the facts or in a shortened form yet still maintaining the mathematical interface with the verb for the facts of the facts are with the facts by the facts. I have two different videos on this channel that actually show him saying this same thing on two separate occasions and graphing it out. So I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to go in depth. And I'm going to give you reasons why those four positionals are basically all you need. Because if you add another positional to those four, now you have muddied the mathematical interface and it will not work forwards and backwards if we maintain rule one, rule equal, i.e. one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. Can't do that if you have more than these four positionals. And I will show you exactly why momentarily. So here you have the four positionals. For, of, with, by. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start with for. What is for? Where does it come from? And why did David choose that as the cause position of his correct sentence structures? Now, of course, I can't with any concreteness say why David chose it because he's not here and he didn't say why but I can guess and I can come to my own logical conclusions as to why I would choose it and that's what I'm doing here I'm making a claim for myself I'm not making a claim for David so in the fiction for is what's known as a preposition preposition and this goes into where you will hear someone like Russell J. Gould talk about pre-positioning the facts, which I don't use that terminology in my teaching simply because 
I think it convolutes the whole thing because you're talking about pre-positioning, you're talking about doing something ahead of time, and that negates the now space. And that creates sort of a psychological negative condition of state, which is a dichotomy. It's a, it's a contradiction to what correct sentence structure is, which is supposed to be a language of, uh, I'm sorry, a grammar of the now space, of the continuum, not of the future. So you're not pre-positioning anything. That's why I don't teach it that way. So it says it's used to indicate the place someone or something is going to or toward. He just left for the office. We're heading for home. So in a sense, that is congruent with the function of for in correct sentence structure. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go into the etymology of that word. So I draw your attention to the earliest nativity root meaning the pi root and it comes from P-E-R forward. Now yes you're going to see things like against, near, toward. Now that's getting closer to what we learned on Google here but for our purposes and for the purpose of uh, correct sentence structure these words are the key words in cognizing the use of for as the cause of a correct sentence structure. It's the first thing. It's the chief thing. Everything comes from a cause. Okay? Please don't get this confused with the fiction. Now, when we parse words to credential syntax values. We go to the earliest nativity root meaning, like we're doing here, the Proto-Indo-European root of the word, so that everybody can have a consistent base with which to syntax. It's the same rule across the board, the earliest nativity root meaning of the word. If that's tangible or non-tangible, then that um, directs how you will syntax that word. This is different, okay? This is correct sentence structure. With correct sentence structure, the author authorizes the meaning of the words. So if you are going to contract with me, so, you know, for instance, I'm telling you or I'm helping to have you understand what I'm using the word for, <laughs> for. And this is what I'm doing. So I think, and this is a guess on my part, the reason for the use of the FOR is because it's first and chief, i.e. it is the cause of the sentence. So every correct sentence structure starts with FOR. It's the cause. It's first, chief. So as you can see here, I've written out incorrect sentence structure for the positionals positional function and for the positional congruency. For is the cause of the sentence. For the positional for of the cause is with the congruency by the by. For and by. So when we're talking about for, when you plug in the mathematical interface, and run the sentence backwards, for becomes by. But we'll get into that later. For right now, for is the cause of the sentence. And the reason is, I just showed you, it maintains an integrity and a congruency with concepts of first and chief and toward, going toward something. So it's a cause. It's the first thing in the sentence, the chief thing in the sentence, coming first, starting it off. That is the function of the positional for. Always comes first in the sentence. Next comes the positional of. And when you look that up, it says expressing the relationship between a part 
in a whole. Expressing the relationship between a scale or measure and a value. When of is used in a sense. We use of when we want to show that people or things relate to other things or people, i.e. they are concerned with other things or people. For example, when we want to say that something or someone belongs to or is a part of something or someone else, we can do it like this. Tiffany stared at the floor of her room. The staring and Tiffany are concerned with her room. Even in the fiction, this makes sense. So again, this is how I am credentialing of with the concern function that I have assigned to it. Of concern. Again, for the positional of, of the concern is with the congruency by the width. When you run the sentence backwards and plug in the mathematical interface, width becomes of, of becomes width. Of is the concern of the sentence. So, so far we have for and we have of. Before we get to with, we have to look at the verb because now the verb comes in. If it is a correct sentence structure sentence, then there must be a verb in it. So what is a verb? Let's revisit this. It's a word used to describe an action state or occurrence informing the main part of the predicate of a sentence. So what else, what other closures can we get on verb? A verb is the action or state of being in a sentence. Okay, now we're getting closer. State of being. So now what we can do is go on to the two verbs of correct sentence structure. Is and the plural of is are. Remember this word or this statement here, state of being. Remember that. Is. Third person singular present indicative of B. Where does B come from? B is tangible contract. It comes from this word, which means exist and grow. So is and are, the two verbs of correct sentence structure, have tangible roots to exist, to grow. So when you go back to is, and now let's look at R, it also comes from B. And we can go to am, which also goes back to B, which means to exist and to grow. Become, happen, I am, I will be. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, these are all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun attempts at articulating the thinking, which, as far as I know, no one, no one, and I mean no one or no many, have ever, ever, ever given closure as to where thinking comes from, what the source of it is. No one has been able to certify this. It just, <laughs> it just is what it is. So I think that's where that saying comes from. It is what it is. Is is the verb of the thinking in correct sentence structure. And is plugs in after the cause for the concern of, then your verb comes in. Because you must have two points with which to draw a straight line. And in this case, you're establishing a geometric level playing field of contract communication. For the facts, of the facts, draw your straight line, then you put your verb in, is, or in the case of for the facts, of the facts, it would be are, plural, two verbs. Choose one. The plurality or singularity of the verb depends upon what? The plurality or singularity of the fact in the cause 
portion of the sentence. So we've covered cause, we've covered the concern, and we went into the verb, and now we go on to the possessive, with. Google tells us that with means accompanied by or possessing as a feature or accompaniment. Well, that's simple. There's a connection right there. There's with and possessing something as a feature or an accompaniment. Hence, with is possessive. And if you remember, back when we looked at of, it said expressing the relationship between a part or a whole. And then also it says when we want to say something or someone belongs to or is a part of something or someone else. So this also explicates why of and with are congruent and why the facts uh, that they are positioning maintain the same value forwards and backwards when you flip the sentence. They're very similar. So we've covered four of the verb with, and now we move on to the authority, by. And Google tells us that by is identifying the agent performing an action, indicating the means of achieving something. This is the chief uh, part that we're looking at here to credential by and how it is used in correct sentence structure. Now again, if you take the positionals uh, of, with, and maybe even by, and you parse them, um, and you go back to the earliest nativity root meanings of those words, you are not going to come to these conclusions. Those conclusions are valid towards credentialing the tangibility or non-tangibility of words when you are syntaxing adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. This is different. This is correct sentence structure. This is you credentialing and giving a reason, a logical reason for why you are using the words you're using and what they mean in your construct. And in my construct, by identifies agent performing an action or, to use more blunt and straightforward terms, it means authority. The authority of the claim. The authority that's taking jurisdiction over everything that came before it in the sentence. So these sentences describe and give closure to the correct sentence structural congruency of the positionals. For the positional four of the causes with the congruency by the by. For and by. For is congruent with by. For the positional of, of the concern, is with the congruency by the with. Of is congruent with with. For the positional with, of the possessive, is with the congruency by the of. With is congruent with of. And then lastly, positional by of the authority is with the congruency by the for. By is congruent with for. This explains the positional concatenation, i.e. sequencing. For the claim of the facts is with the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge by the claimant. This sentence says the same thing. However, I am using colons to represent the positionals and lodials in the sentence. <clears throat> For is a positional, the is a lodial. Of is a positional, the is a lodial. With is a positional, the is a lodial. By is a positional, the is a lodial. So for the claim of the facts is with the knowledge by the claimant. Notice, there is no space between this colon and the C and claimant. There is no space between the colon and the C and claim. That is how those two things can flip. Where when you read the sentence backwards, for the claimant of the knowledge is with the facts by the claim. You see how that works? For the claimant 
of the knowledge is with the facts, by the claim, for the claim of the facts is with the knowledge by the claimant. For the claim of the facts is with the knowledge by the claimant. Do you see how that works? For the claim of the facts is with the knowledge by the claimant. Of the facts. You see this. Colon, space, facts. Of the facts. Of the facts. For the claim. For the claim. With the knowledge. With the knowledge. By the claimant. By the claimant. I don't know how much more straightforward I can get with this. Now that's a short form of the sentence. Let's look at the long form of the sentence. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the performance by the claimant. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the performance by the claimant. Yes, I'm not saying correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I'm not speaking that out the whole ways. But you can see what I'm doing here, I think. I can reasonably guess that you can. So, for the claimant's knowledge. Colon, claimant's knowledge. For the claimant's knowledge. Of the facts. Of the facts. Is. Is. With the performance. With the performance. You see this. Colon space. With the performance. By the claimant. Colon no space. Claimant. By the claimant. You get where I'm coming from. For those of students who have been studying this channel and have done workshops with me, I think you know where I'm going with this. So lastly, I'm going to look at a common error that still occurs to this day. And I'm going to give, hopefully, some final closure on why this is not correct. This first sentence in yellow here, you can see this is not correct. Going by what I just taught you, what I just showed you, this is starting a sentence off with a concern. Correct sentence structure always starts with a cause. For the. For the. The chief thing, the first thing, for the. This is not correct. This is starting, even though this is not a sentence with a verb in it, it's still correct sentence structure and it still must start with a cause in order to be in compliance with those quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, rules of grammar. One and one is one. One word, one meaning, one congruency, one sequencing, one function. So we have a concern here, and then a possessive. You would read it like this, literally, of the Jason Matthew with the glass, which is not correct. The correct way would be for the Jason Matthew of the glass, the cause and concern. For the Jason Matthew of the glass, cause concern, because this is your correct sentence structure concatenation. For the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, by the facts. And if you just take this bottom part out, now you have the mechanics of writing a name. For the facts, of the facts. For the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. Period. End of story. Closure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this focused mini-class on the positionals. I hope it's given you some closures that you perhaps didn't have before. And I hope it explains to you why I do the things I do in the way that I do them. 
and why I say when I do reaction videos to certain individuals who use incorrect grammar, why I say it's incorrect, I've just shown you one of the many mistakes that are made commonly still to this day. Even with the almost 500 videos I put out on this channel, people still make mistakes. And there can really only be two reasons for that. Number one, they still don't know what they're doing. Or number two, they're doing it on purpose. I'm not one to say which one that is because I'm not going to make a claim for someone else. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, turn your notification bell on. If you want to join up and uh, for the membership of this channel, click the join button. There are two tiers. You can find out all about that uh, when you click on that button. You can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. If you would like to apply for a correct grammar workshop, uh, send me an email. Please include your correct name at the bottom, your full correct name at the bottom for rule one rule equal. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult and see if this is something you really want to do. And uh, we'll go from there. I've been teaching this stuff for five years, very successfully, hundreds of people all over the earth. If you'd like to be one of those individuals, go ahead and shoot me an email. I appreciate your viewership. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.